This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can find all the cards in this video in their store by using the links in the description below. Hi everyone, I'm Nita Hone, and it's time for another MTG Top 10, the series where I usually rank cards based on their historical performance and Magic's highest level of competition. Sometimes, though, I like to look at the opposite end of the spectrum, and that's what we're doing today with a look at the game's worst tutors. Tutors are cards that let you search your library for a card and put it into your hand, into play, or on top of your library. There are tutors that are staples in many of Magic's formats, and Demonic Tutor is simply considered one of the game's most powerful cards. However, that doesn't mean that all tutors are good. Some of them are overcosted, some of them are too restrictive, and some of them are both. As is usually the case for my worst videos, this list is based on my opinion, but for a card to end up here, it needs to be bad in all of Magic's formats, whether you're playing with 40 cards, 60 cards, or 99. And they have to have been bad for all of their existence. All right, let's dive in with my picks for Magic's 10 worst tutors. At number 10, I've got Avatar of Growth. For four generic and two green, it's a 4-4 trampler that costs one less mana for each opponent you have, and when it enters the battlefield, each player tutors up two basic lands and puts them onto the battlefield. This is the card on the list that's the most heavily played in Commander, and obviously it's at its best the more opponents you have, but this has a massive problem that I can't really get past. The effect is entirely symmetrical. And because you just spent mana casting the Avatar, this means that your opponents come out ahead since you went down a card to cast it, and they're going to get the first shot at using their newly acquired mana. Sure, the lands do enter untapped for you, but you're not likely to be able to do a ton with them, while your opponents will have access to their full complement of mana, plus the lands you just gave them. At number 9, it's Cataran Persuader. For 2 black mana, you get a 2-1, and you can pay 1 generic mana to tutor up a mercenary with mana value 1 or less and put it directly on the battlefield. Mercenaries were a thing in Masks block, and most of them have this type of ability. They can search up other mercenaries, and generally those with lower mana values than their own. This type of ability can be powerful. I mean, the Rebels in the same block dominated that block format and made an impact on Standard, but the big difference is that the Rebels let you move up a chain, searching up stronger and stronger Rebels, while the Mercenaries could usually only get weaker ones. The other Mercenaries can search up higher mana value Mercenaries, so I don't think they're as bad as this one is. Still, having the ability to put a creature from your deck directly on the battlefield could be pretty strong, but the problem is that there are only three Mercenaries that cost one in the whole game, and they're all awful. Molting Harpy, Rampant Crawler, and Soldier of Fortune are your options. None of those are worth having in your deck, and neither is Cataran Persuader. Still, the Persuader has a fail case of being a 2-mana two 2-1, two so there are a lot of worse tutors out there. At number 8, I've got Bosri's Aegis. This is a tutor from one of the Planeswalker decks. These were standard legal precons released between 27 and 2020, and they all featured a Planeswalker as their face card. These decks all included a card that could let you tutor up that specific Planeswalker. I have Bosri's Aegis as the stand-in for all of those tutors, because I think it's the worst of the bunch. For 2 generic and 2 white, you can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each of up to 2 target creatures, and then tutor up Bosri Devoted Paladin and put it into your hand. As you can probably guess from seeing Bosri, these Planeswalkers were super powered down. Bosri just doesn't give you anything close to the value you deserve for a 6-mana Planeswalker, as his plus 1 and minus 1 are minimally impactful. It also bothers me that if you only have one creature, you can only get one counter out of the Aegis. Isn't this thing powered down enough that you could at least let a player put two counters on one creature in that situation? Still, this does do something other than Tutor that actually changes the board a little bit, and Bosri isn't completely useless. The cards that are ahead of it on this list don't do anything but Tutor, so it makes their floor a lot worse than a card that can put some counters on the board. At number 7, it's Demonic Collusion. For 3 generic and 2 black, it lets you tutor up any card and put it into your hand. You're overpaying a ton for that effect, and while Collusion comes with some upside, the upside it does have is hard to take advantage of. It has buyback, which means you can pay an additional cost when you cast it and return it to your hand when it resolves instead of putting it into the graveyard. The buyback cost here is that you have to discard two cards. In other words, when you cast Demonic Collusion and choose to buy it back, you actually go down cards. Sure, you can fire off the Collusion again later, but you're still playing a way overcosted tutor and it just isn't worth it. At number 6, it's Library of Lot Nam. This sorcery costs 4 generic and a blue, and it lets your opponent make a choice. They can let you draw 3 cards at the beginning of the next turn's upkeep, or they can let you tutor up any card and put it into your hand. So, let's focus on the tutor part for a second. 5 mana to search up any card at sorcery speed makes for a pretty awful card, as I established in my discussion of Demonic Collusion. 
Sure, it's flexible, but that's a ton of mana to spend to search up a single card, and it almost doesn't matter what you grab at that point, since you're overpaying so hard. So the fact that this is a five mana sorcery that tutors is already pretty bad, but it also comes with additional downside. Your opponent can instead choose for you to get nothing immediately, and sure, you eventually get to draw three, but you don't get those cards until the next upkeep. And it isn't like paying five to draw three is a great deal either. Your opponent will have a good idea as to which mode is the least useful for you too, so you're basically never going to get the mode you want when you cast this. At number five, I've got Bifurcate. For three generic and a green, this sorcery lets you tutor up a copy of a creature in play and put it directly on the battlefield. Obviously, this type of card is almost entirely useless in Commander, because most decks only have one copy of each card, but even in 60 card formats, this card is terrible. That's because it does stone nothing, unless you or your opponent have a creature in play that you have another copy of in your deck. And there's a good chance that even when you do pull that off, the card you search up is very likely not to be worth the four mana you spend. Your opponent can also completely blow you out by killing the creature you target. In short, this can't search something up in very many situations, and it's way too easy to disrupt even when you can search for something. At number four, I've got Trap Maker's Snare. For one generic and a blue, it's an instant that tutors up a trap and puts it directly into your hand. This is a case where the tutor is just way too narrow. There are only 20 traps in the game and most of them aren't worth playing in any format. The idea is kind of cool because if you search up a trap at the right time, they tend to be discounted. So in theory, you could grab a trap that works in a perfect situation, but paying two mana to do that just isn't worth it, especially because so many of the traps are bad. This does have a chance at getting better in the future if we ever see traps again, but it's been a very long time since we've seen the subtype, so we may never see it again. At number three, it's Ristic Tutor. For two generic and a black, this sorcery lets you tutor up any card and put it into your hand. It's only one more mana than Demonic Tutor, so of all the cards in this list, it definitely has the highest ceiling. But it also has the lowest floor. This is because if any player pays two generic mana, you don't get to do anything. That's right, when you cast Ristic Tutor, you give your opponents a counterspell that costs two generic and doesn't make them use a card. So you just end up paying three mana for the privilege of putting Ristic Tutor into your graveyard. At number two, it's Mangara's Tome. For five generic mana, when this artifact enters the battlefield, you search up five cards, exile them in a face-down pile, and shuffle that pile, and then shuffle your library. Then you could pay two generic mana for a replacement effect that lets you draw from your face-down pile instead of your library when you would draw a card. So the Tome lets you tutor up five cards, but then you put them in a little mini deck, and you have to pay two mana to draw a random card from it. And to do it, you have to replace your normal draws. So that's a massive amount of mana and time to get those cards that you tutored up, and it just isn't worth it. Before we get to the number one card in the list, there is one honorable mention I want to look at. Creatures who search up additional copies of themselves, like Legion Conquistador. This isn't an honorable mention in the sense that this was close to ending up in this video, but I think this is something that people will expect to see on the list, so I want to explain why they aren't. The biggest reason is this style of card tends to be solid to good and limited. A 3-mana 2-2 isn't very good, but one that draws you cards definitely is. Legion Conquistador was actually quite good, because it also had a useful creature type. There are also some cards of this ilk that have seen play in 60-card formats, Squadron Hawk the most famously in Cobblade decks and others, but it isn't alone. Avarax has four Pro Tour Top 8s and one Grand Prix Top 8, and Screaming Seahawk has two Grand Prix Top 8s. So, yeah, these kinds of cards might look kind of underwhelming since they are inefficient creatures that can only tutor up copies of themselves, but it turns out a creature that adds to the board while drawing you cards is pretty good, even if the cards they draw you are just more inefficient creatures. That's why I don't think this type of tutor, while seemingly way too narrow, doesn't deserve to be on the list. All right, with all of that out of the way, let's take a look at what I think is the worst tutor in Magic. And that card is... Assembly Hall. This artifact costs five generic mana, and you can pay four and tap it and reveal a creature card from your hand to tutor up a copy of that card and put it into your hand. In other words, before Assembly Hall actually does something, you have to invest nine mana. And the payoff? Highly conditional card drop. If you don't have a creature card in your hand that has the right name, the ability doesn't do anything. Obviously, this card is at a natural disadvantage in a singleton format like Commander, but it's terrible everywhere else, too. You just can't spend this much mana on drawing a card, and this doesn't even always do that. So, those are my picks for the worst tutors in all of Magic. If you're interested in owning some horrible cards, check out the description where you can find a direct Card Kingdom link for each card that appeared in the video. If you want to make sure you catch future videos, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. And if you want to catch up on past videos, including many more that look at the worst cards in the game, you should see a playlist on your screen shortly. Thanks for watching. <laughs>